True fans of the show will never forget episode 19. It was a real milestone. Boy, it seems like just a year ago. Well, good old episode 19 was famous for a lot of things, like the smudge on the camera lens that never seemed to go away, the poor audio and video that's painful for even me to watch, but most importantly, for the drill impress table. The real heart of our drill press table is the system of lead screw cranks and sliders that create an XY sliding table complete with locks, cursors, and micro adjustments. I was so young back a year ago. Well, since then, a lot of people have built their own drill and press table, and some have even sent me photos of some that look a little nicer than mine. But hundreds of others have been intimidated by the complexity and the um, revolutionariness of the project. And I admit, it is a challenging project to build, but the biggest problem people are having is that it's so, well, big. And that makes for raising the table a little difficult, especially if you don't have big biceps. So I'm thinking of a more compact solution, maybe something that's a little easier to build, but still has a lot of the features that you're gonna use most. And that's what we're gonna do this time on Blue Collar Woodworking. I'm looking for something with a little extra room as compared to a lot of drill press tables. Not just to support long work pieces, but so I can scatter a bunch of bits and stuff that I'm too lazy to take care of all over the top of the drill press table and still have room to work. The drill and press table is 18 by 24. I'm thinking of something a little more compact, maybe 16 by 20. Now you're definitely going to want to use some good quality cabinet grade plywood for this, but I think about a quarter of a sheet should be fine because that stuff's pretty expensive. Of course, you gotta have some hold downs and all that good stuff, so we're gonna put some T-tracks in the top. But I'm not really convinced that I want my fence to run in these T-tracks on the top, like on the drill impress table. I know that's the common way to do it, but if I was gonna do things like everybody else does, I may as well turn off the cameras and get a real job. What about a T-square style fence? The kind you have on a router table or on your table saw. I figure that would make it easier to move and because the fence is sitting on the rails, it would be really easy to just take off. And since it doesn't have to slide within those T-tracks, then I don't have to worry about those tracks getting all full of sawdust and junk and making it hard to adjust my fence. All right, that looks pretty good for the table. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and then we'll come back and talk fences. The latest free plan on StumpyNubs.com is a spring-loaded sanding block. It's designed to fit the same belt as your belt sander. It's a great idea. We're checking out. And the best part is, it's free this week over at StumpyNubs.com. So, we got the table roughed out, look pretty good, eh? Time to start talking fences. I already have one idea on what I want inside my fence, because a while ago I got tired of picking all the dust boogers out of my nose, and I decided that everything I build from here on out is going to have some sort of dust collection built in. 
So I was thinking on this, we would build it into the fence itself, kind of like a rotor table. You see, if we make the fence hollow and we have some way to uh, suck in right around the drill bit, maybe some holes in the front, and we connect the hose to the back on the end, well, we'll be golden. Of course, we got to put that hose connection over to one side so the old column doesn't get in the way. And to make it easier to hook our hose up, I'm going to use one of these babies. This is a 4-inch PVC downspout adapter. Now what that means is it's 4 inches round on one side, which coincidentally is the same size as your dust collection hose. You can slip that right inside there, maybe use a couple screws and some foil tape to secure it. And then this side is 2 inches by 3 inches square. Much easier to adapt to a compact space like the back of our fence. In fact, I use these little babies quite a lot on projects for dust collection because they're really handy to adapt round to square on some more compact projects. Of course, we got to have a way to attach the fence stops and hold downs and all that good stuff. So I'm thinking we're going to run some T-Track on the fence. Now you can make your own T-Track by using the quarter inch hardboard in your router like I showed in the drill and press table build. But this is supposed to be a little bit easier project, so I'm just using the store button kind here. Now, how to attach the fence to the table rail? I'm thinking the easiest would be some sort of knob. My table saw has a fancy cam lever, which works great, but the bandsaw just has a knob, and that works pretty good too, especially on shorter fences. And I think a knob will make this build a whole lot simpler. So, I'm going to turn you over to the stash while I hit this, and uh, we'll bring it back and show you the results. This show ain't free, folks. Help support woodworking infotainment by visiting the Stumpy store and checking out the project plans for a lot of what Stumpy makes. It's just a click away at StumpyNubs.com. The height of your workbench is no accident, unless you're building a cabinet or something and accidentally ended up with a bench. Either way, it's probably just the right height for hand planing, which is great for hand planing, but not so great for other tasks like dovetailing. Now, if you want to spend all day bending over, you should be uh, doing your taxes. A quick solution is just to stand up a longer board in your vise, and then to clamp your workpiece to that board. Get that intricate dovetail work up where your bifocals can see it. Not that it'll do much to improve the quality of my dovetailing, but it sure will help my sore old back. pretty good. You know, I gotta tell you, I had all sorts of ideas for tricking this baby out with storage and stuff like that, and I do tend to get a little carried away sometimes. This is supposed to be light, especially for smaller drill presses, and the more drawers and storage you have built in, the heavier it's going to be, the harder it's going to be to crank up, and the more depth it's going to take up on your drill press. So I just went with the bare essentials. I remember on the uh, drill and press table build, I had the slide out drawer on the front for drill bits and I really liked that. So I went ahead and I did something similar here. I made two slide out drawers just for drill bits because those are the things that you reach for most on a drill press. I also went ahead and made some replaceable inserts to put in the uh, spot right where the drill bit's going to hit the table so that we can freshen that baby up. We can have a little zero clearance on there and you can even make some with bigger holes if you want to use sanding drums on your drill press. As far as function, this fence adjusts way smoother than the other one that locked inside the T-Tracks. Now, it might have a little bit of deflection, but on a drill press, that's not nearly as big a deal because most of your pressure is going down, not into the fence. I suppose if you're going to do some really heavy-duty drilling or that uh, slight deflection bothers you, you can put a clamp on the end and just lock it down in place. I still have to drill my holes in the front for the dust collection, but that's not going to be a big deal. Um, 
you're going to see this in action quite a bit here at the Snappy Nubs Workshop going forward. And of course, I have to attach my dust collection on the back via our handy dandy little fitting. And then we're going to be all set to put it in service. I'm not going to try to compare the thing to the drill and press table because they're two different animals. The drill and press table with the XY adjustment is fantastic for most jobs here in my shop. This would be great for a quick adjustment type drill press and maybe a shop that doesn't need all that fancy dandy stuff. But um, I'm going to put some plans up over at StumpyNubs.com if you do want to build this or you can uh, build your own version right here from the video. Whatever floats your boat, the point is just build something yourself inside the shop and get to work using it. People are always asking me, Stumpy, you're changing the woodworking world one episode at a time. What do you think the craft will look like 20 years from now? Or 50? Well, I can't say I haven't thought about it. But I don't think it's going to be all that different from the way it is today. What I mean is, there will come some changes. I mean, we're all going to have flying table saws for one, and wood will probably be obsolete. But after thousands of years of innovations, there doesn't seem to be many more areas to improve upon. Except tape measures. Somebody is going to invent a tape measure that doesn't get misplaced. And I think we might all evolve fingers that are actually pencils that never get dull. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that ever since cave wood workers made clubs to whack dinosaurs with, all the way up to the invention of the CNC rotor fence, I gotta get one of those. The tools have advanced, but the craft itself has remained largely the same. Woodworking has always been an income for the professional, an escape for the hobbyist, an education for the kids. My father built some two by four bunk beds with a circular saw and a hammer. 25 years later, I built a Morris chair from two by fours using a table saw and a mortising machine. In that quarter century, the tools may have changed, but the idea didn't. Making something with your hands that you can be proud of and maybe sit on. That kind of pleasure, it doesn't come from fancy and expensive tool technology. It comes from the flow of the grain and the smell of the sawdust in the air. And the sharing of the craft with those you love. So, as long as there are trees, there will be woodworkers who can sit back and have a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. <laughs>